but Macon State College Health. Start right here. Okay, state your name and. Hi, my name is Christian Williams, and this is on behalf of Macon State College Health Communications class with Professor Savadawa. And basically what we're doing is we're working with the American Red Cross, and we're trying to get students, faculty, and staff, and even the community in general, from Macon and Warner Robins to donate blood. And the this purpose of this video is to educate students and really the public as a whole as to why we should donate blood. And as I like as I always like to say, give blood now, make excuses later. And so now you're actually going to meet Mr. Chandler Reed, which is actually Mr. Kevin Reed's son. And he's actually going to give a reason as to why we should donate blood. And it's not really to put him on the spotlight, but it's just to say that he is someone dear to um, a staff member here at the school. And, just, and it's just to show that it's not just a community project for school students, but it's a reason as to why we should save lives. Okay. Yes, because they're all the way back in my head so weird. <laughs> <laughs> my head come to the whole screen. <laughs> okay, sir. Okay. See, look, he didn't want to say nothing, but he know my head. <laughs> I'm just playing with you. Okay. Okay, let me know where you want to start. Okay. In three, two. Thank you, Chandler, so much for coming us. I mean, coming to see us today. It's, it's a pleasure finally meeting you. Mr. Kevin Reed has told me so much about you. I um, had a pleasure of knowing him for just a couple of years. Pause. All right, my one is correct. Okay. Um. Can we start it? I. A bit closer to. Okay. And okay, that works. Okay. Can you start over? And in three, two. Start all over? What, what? Do I start all over? Or? Three, two, one. Hey, Chandler, thank you so much for joining us today. I know it's been, of course, you know, heart struggle for you. Um, and so if you can just open up a little bit to us about some of the things that you encounter with the kind of surgeries that you need and with the supply of blood that you also need to. Um, as of last year. Okay. 2011, mm -hmm. <laughs> February, um, I had a virus attack my heart. Oh wow! And um, at the time, it it caused my heart to fail. Okay. Which required me to have tons of blood then, so I had to go to heart bypass. Okay. And it was just it was just something I never thought would happen. Mm. And also at the time. I was kind of afraid of taking blood, mm. but um, there came that point that I had to take it. Yeah, no choice. Because it was a life or death situation at that mm -hmm. point. And if I could thank the person that gave me the blood, I, I definitely would. Mm. Well, thank you so much for really opening up. I know this is very heartfelt. And I know that this, it takes a lot of energy out of you, not only just to be here today, but to even talk about this. Because a lot of people, they don't want to talk about the kind of serious issues, you know, the effect that's day to day. And I just want to, to bring you out because people out there don't understand how important this really is. You never know what can happen to you in a second. And so, you know, I just want to thank you again. I can't thank you enough for your time. You know, it's not just for a community project, like I keep reiterating to, uh, to everybody else, but it's about throwing out there, it's about saving lives, because you never know, it can it make it be you, it could be, you know, a family member, it could be a friend, and so what was your life before you actually had this bypass surgery? I was a regular 21-year-old, mm -hmm. going to school at Mercer University here in Macon, wow. and um, almost through with my senior year, and... What? Wow, what was your major? Biology. Wow, okay. Minor in chemistry. Wow, you're a smart kid. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> wow, that's awesome. So, like, before you, you know, had this bypass surgery, what were some of the things that you often did you can't really do now, per se? Um, don't have the energy to do as much as I used to. Mm -hmm. uh, it's working probably at 7%. Mm. And right now I have this pump right here okay. that helps operate for the left side of my heart. Wow. It pumps the blood. And 
and you know there are many benefits to giving blood you, mm -hmm. you can save someone's life like myself mm. or you can save two people's lives with just one pint of blood mm. but you get free cookies and <laughs> juice <laughs> oh, that's awesome that's awesome um so what is something that you would share to the public um, about yourself that they may not know about you, that you would like them to get to know about you? Um, I'd like to share that there is, that there is no definite answer that you can get from, from being young mm -hmm. in life. You could just, things happen. Mm -hmm. It may not be in your plans, it's in somebody else's plans. Mm. And without that blood, I mean, it could be life or death. Mm. Wow. So, but I mean, there are those people who, you know, fear the feeling of needles. They fear that they're too anemic. They fear um, they don't have enough time to give blood. So what would you say to someone who had those kind of perceived barriers in their mind, that kind of fear that prevented them from actually donating blood, what would you what would you say to them? I mean, as of the Red Cross, they they test your blood to see if there's any any bad things in it, first of all, and as far as needles go, all they do is hold your breath. <laughs> mm -hmm. And it's I mean it's something you fear at first. Yeah, I was, punks, right? Yeah, because, <laughs> because <laughs> so I was terrified of needles to begin uh -huh. with. I'm mm -hmm. like, oh my gosh, they take 20 pills this morning. Wow. But you know, I have to take those 20 pills. Mm -hmm. And if somebody didn't give up their blood for me, then I wouldn't be here right now interviewing wow. with you. So it's just so much that people can do. Mm -hmm. which is one pint of blood. Mm -hmm. There are thousands of people in the world that need blood right now. Mm -hmm. and, so, so as a whole... And, like, they can be the, mm -hmm. and they can be the difference in the world, so... Mm -hmm. I don't think many people recognize that. No, I don't think so either. But this is actually my second time giving blood. So I'm, I'm excited about it, especially after meeting you. Um, Cause for me, this this touched me, and this gave me motivation to do what I'm doing now. It just, you know, so I I just really my heart really goes out to you, and I really appreciate your time. But one last thing is how how well you may not know, but do you exactly remember how much you know units of blood you probably needed ever since the surgery? Five Perhaps. to six, possibly. Five to six units. Okay. Okay. It's probably one or two for every surgery that I've had. I've had five within the past year. Five wow. open heart surgeries within the past year. Wow, that's amazing. That's not including operations. <laughs> Are you serious? So, like, like, what kind of operations, if you don't mind? So. Um, endoscopy. Okay. Where they put a tube down your throat. Mm -hmm. Colonoscopy. Mm -hmm. And then they have this little camera pill that you can swallow mm -hmm. and it will see stuff inside oh wow and then as you can see with my neck right here mm -hmm. i've had a uh, right heart cap okay and it basically measures the pressures in your heart okay so i've had plenty of those mm. okay it's well, been quite a journey <laughs> Well, I see that, but I, I just can't thank you enough you know oftentimes we complain but we take a lot of things for granted you know, so I definitely appreciate your time. 